Got another scan tool to look at today from Innova. This is the 7111 SDS Pro. This is an OE level diagnostic tablet. Let's open it up, take a closer look and see how it does. Hey, what's up YouTube, Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. Just another scan tool to look at today from Innova. It looks like we've got quite a few features on this one. Got a seven inch touchscreen, 44 plus workshop tools. Of course, this is gonna do OBD2 diagnostics, OEM diagnostics. It's got the workshop tools installed, bi-directional controls and active tests, special functions, and it's got a secure gateway unlock for the FCA auto off. And we also have some diagnostic reports that we can create with this. Now here on the side are all the workshop tools that are available. It said 44 different workshop tools or 44 plus. So we've got the oil maintenance reset, battery reset, electronic parking brake, steering angle sensor calibration, TPMS relearn, ABS bleeding, battery alternator test, DPF reset or regen, throttle body relearn, TEC learn, suspension calibration, transmission fluid level check, maintenance reset, transmission reset, transmission fluid change reset, window door, roof, key coding procedure, immobilizer reset, read write, odometer settings, injector coding, AFC setting, clutch relearn, reset electronic traction system, AC system relearn, headlamp calibration, coolant bleeding, transport mode, knock sensor reset, transmission fluid temperature, EV, HEV, PHEV, battery health, language change reset, tire size reset, occupant seat, sensor calibration, and cylinder reset, and more. Well, that's quite a mouthful here, but that's everything that it says that's available here on the side. On the back, it kind of gives you a little bit of a rundown as far as those reports and whatnot. So let's uh, open this one up and take a closer look feels like a pretty good durable case let's open this up it looks like we've got a, a little storage compartment here so that you can click these tabs and unlock looks like we've got our ac adapter here to plug that into the usb-c now here's the uh, vci connector through the obd port and something that i saw on here that's pretty cool is this has a vci that you can disconnect slide this there we go so the vehicle communication interface will disconnect from the tool so you can uh, you can have this plugged into the vehicle and take this tablet with you and still be able to read and diagnose as you're doing this got a little protective screen on here it says you can register your sds tablet by creating an rs pro account and it lets you know how you can get free access to most likely component system causes for the dtc's repair tips diagnostic reports updates and much more and keep your tablet updated and at peak performance by connecting to the internet peel off the protective sheet here and it says press and hold the power button to turn it on Let's do that. All right, we'll let that get powered up here, but I also wanna take a look at this quick start guide. This just kinda of lets you know what you need to do. So fully charge your tablet with the included cable before first use. Note, during charging, the tablet will automatically turn on. Now, after fully charging it, you need to set your tablet preferences, your Wi-Fi connection, preferred units, idle time, volume level, brightness level, and theme preference. Check for updates to ensure optimal performance. Keep your tablet up to date with the latest free software, data, and firmware. So go to settings, version information to check and install update. Create a free account. It allows access to all of the tablet's power features. I don't think you have to create the account, but it's recommending that you do. First time user experience tutorial. So this has a little bit of a tutorial to let you know how to use this. Smog check or inspection monitor program location allows selecting your US state to enhance emission readiness logic. So that's pretty neat as well. You can let this tool know what state you're in because we do have different smog requirements. Now, of course, you're just gonna plug this into the OBD port once this is fully charged. And then it says once connected to the vehicle, the tablet is going to display the year make, model, VIN, and mileage. If the tablet is unable to pick up the vehicle or detect the vehicle, you can enter the VIN manually. Uh, that's something that I have had to do with some scan tools. Hopefully this one will be able to pick up the car that I'm going to plug it into here in a little bit. And here it is saying that you make sure that your tablet is always up to date and you can go down through here and gives you the instructions on how to get it updated. So I'm not going to bore you guys with all of the initial setup. I'm going to run through here, enter in all of my information and the Wi-Fi, and get this fully charged up. Then we'll take this out to a driveway, hook it up to a vehicle and see how it does. Okay. Well, I've got this fully charged up now. You can see we're at 100%, but this looks like a little bit of an introductory tutorial. I just uh, restarted this. Now it's showing us kind of the main screen and I'm just gonna swipe through this and you can see this is your utility bar, letting you know what's going on, the time, this button here, the Wi-Fi and battery. And it just kind of gives you a little rundown and where your VIN is gonna show up. And then of course, this is your home screen and lets you know what each tab does, the OBD, diagnostics or the obd2 diagnostics this gives you 
The access to the advanced OBD2 features, including DTCs with fixed information, freeze frame data, inspection monitor data, live data, including recording and graphing. Now it says here the OEM diagnostics tab will deliver professional level functionality for reading and clearing the OEM enhanced fault codes not available over generic OBD2 scan systems and also will perform bidirectional and active tests on several systems and can create a comprehensive vehicle inspection health report. Here our workshop tools is going to be the over 30 popular routines. It says 44 on the box. Self-test calibrations and special functions designed for routine service and repair. And then here it will show you the previous vehicles that you've scanned and then of course you can get into the settings and change things you can change the brightness and a few other things on here as well let's go ahead and skip out of this tutorial so this is our home screen now i've got a 2013 rav4 out front let's go get this plugged in and see how it does and then we'll bring it back in here and wrap this up All right, so all I did was uh, plug this in and press the ignition. You can see we've already found the vehicle. It's the 2013 Toyota RAV4. Now we do have a smart key here, so it's asking with or without smart key. So let's hit with smart key. Let's hit continue. Now hopefully you're able to see this and we don't have too much glare. It's asking what the mileage is on the odometer. We'll plug this in, 208-377. First, let's jump into OBD2 Diagnostics, and it says it's retrieving the vehicle information. All right, so here we've got a couple different options. This is showing the OBD2 Diagnostics, Misfire Monitor, Fuel System Monitor, Comprehensive Component Monitor, EGR System Monitor, Catalyst Monitor, EVAP System Monitor, Oxygen Sensor Monitor, Oxygen Sensor Heater Monitor. Looks like everything is green, so it looks like this vehicle is ready for inspection. It also has a little green light right here. Now we can also do live data. So we can just go through and select any of these data parameter IDs that we want to see. That's probably enough. Let's uh, let's go ahead and start the engine. Now let's just hit view. So these are all the ones that we selected. So this is going to show us everything that uh, that we selected there. So engine coolant temp right now is at 100, 104. That's going to jump slowly as it warms up. We can also graph these. That's pretty cool. It's a really nice graphic on here too. It's uh, pretty responsive. So engine RPMs, let's go ahead and just bump the throttle and see what happens here. There you go. Also our fuel trims changed when I did that. Same with the spark advance. And here you can see the intake air temperature and the mass airflow sensor also spiked with the throttle. So let's try that one more time. There you go. Really, really clear, really easy to read. Let's go back. We're gonna take a look at the OEM diagnostics. So here we have the AB, ABS, VSC, traction control, air conditioner, back door, blind spot monitor, master, blind spot monitor, slave, charging control, combination meter all kinds of stuff in here let's just scroll all the way down now i do have a tire pressure monitor sensor light on and so let's hit this right now and see what kind of information we can read here so let's read the dtcs okay so it's just saying the transmitter id not received id one that's in the current and history c2121 let's take a look at the live data for the tire pressure monitor sensors Sorry about my voice, It's uh, I'm just kind of getting over being sick, so I apologize for that while we're sitting here waiting. Well, it looks like we might have an issue here with one of them because it says the temperature in tire minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. All these others are at 77 degrees, so probably the batteries are dying in those. They, they only last so long. Take a look at special functions. So we can do the ID registration. So you can register new sensors to the vehicle. So that's that's great. I'm not going to do this right now. So let's hit exit. I've never had a scan tool that could do that. So that's pretty neat. All right, well, let's go back. See what else we got here. Now we can also go here. Instead of selecting each system, we can scan all systems. Let's do that. It's kind of like a full vehicle scan for a health report. Well, that's pretty neat. This goes through and scans every system and then it gives you a little bit of a report. Here we can expand all. I'm just gonna click on the uh, engine and ECT or engine and electronically controlled transmission and see what it says. Let's read the DTCs. 
So it just says startability function P1604 and P2109 throttle pedal position sensor A minimum stop performance. Well, that might be old and the startability function might be from, you know, another time that this uh, didn't start or had an issue. We're probably going to erase those here when we're done. Uh, tire pressure monitor, we already know about that. Two faults. One fault in the air conditioner. Let's take a look at that. Air inlet damper control servo motor. Uh, it also says we have a fault in the charging control. Let's take a look at that. So it says battery current sensor circuit. P1550 current. You know, I don't think we have any issues there, but this is great information. Of course, as you jump in here, you can learn a lot about what's going on with the vehicle. Here it says main body, one fault. Let's read this code. B1273 status, it's history. So sliding roof ECU communication stop. Navigation system, one fault here as well. Let's take a quick look at this. Voice recognition microphone disconnected. Okay, well, didn't know this car even had navigation. Uh, that's it. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to erase all the DTCs. I don't know if any of those are issues. Obviously, if we have a TPMS issue, it's going to come back. But I'm going to go ahead and erase everything that was in this system. So the TPMS light just went off. Let's go ahead and scan again and see if any of these issues come right back. Only two that I noticed are for the engine and transmission. So let's go take a look at those. The TPMS did not give us a code this time. So maybe just those batteries are starting to wear down. Throttle pedal position sensor A, minimum stop performance. So we have current and in history. So still not sure what that, uh, what that might mean to us, but uh, let's take a look at the live data. Let's do the data PID group. So we of course want to look at the throttle. There's our throttle right there. There we go. Throttle sensor position, throttle sensor volt percentage, throttle sensor two volt percentage, accelerator sensor number one, number two, throttle motor duty. Now let's graph these. Now I'm gonna step on the throttle. Well, everything's responding. Well, you know, I'm not sure if it has anything to do with this right here, the throttle sensor position. You can see everything else jumped a lot higher, but the second time I snapped the throttle, this one is not responding as much. Uh, neither is this throttle motor. So I wonder if there's a, an issue here with our throttle position sensor. Well, there it jumped up this time, but... Well, we may have an issue with our throttle position sensor. I mean, it's still pretty responsive. You know, I don't think it's a, a major issue and it's not causing our check engine light to be on, but let's go back out of here and let's take a look at the workshop tools. So we can do the oil maintenance reset, battery reset. This is all the things that uh, I read on the side of that box earlier. Now again, here down in settings, we can jump down into there and uh, here you can email Innova Monday through Friday, six to six Pacific time. They're in California. Let's go back to home. Really straightforward tool. Very, very powerful and very responsive as you saw. Let's go ahead and uh, head back to the garage and wrap this up. Well, that's pretty much it. Again, we're just scratching the surface with this quick little unboxing and review. Sorry my voice is kind of fading off and on today. I'm just kind of recovering from a cold, but hopefully you kind of get the idea. This is a really nice scan tool for the money. Definitely more powerful than some of the other scan tools that I've looked at. Looks like it's got quite a few additional features. You know, the TPMS was just one thing that we kind of looked at here on that Toyota RAV4 and probably something that I do need to address in addition to that throttle position sensor. Now, of course, I do need to learn some of the different functions and features on this tool, but like any scan tool, you're going to have a little bit of a learning curve, but this one seems to be pretty intuitive and just a really straightforward menu. So looking forward to using this in the future. I hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. And of course, I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up your very own Innova 7111 scan tool as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.